So they were able to turn around a two-point deficit to take a 7-5 lead. And Will Martin Larson help the boys in blue keep that momentum going. Well, that's uh, not the start he wanted. Quite a nice shot run into the 1-3 pocket. It was a good pocket hit. No, he didn't get all uh, all 10 pins, but it was a good pocket hit, and that'll uh, give him some confidence that he's on the right line. Oh, yeah, absolutely. These guys just want to get up to a, a not necessarily a good start, but a reasonable start, just to stay confident, and hopefully uh, within a frame or two, they'll be ready. So here comes the lefty, Jason Couch. All about power, this fella. Big, big shoulders, huge backswing. Look at that. And then great rotation, tremendous reaction in the back end, and he too leaves the 10 off uh, a pretty solid pocket here. Well, that's very unusual because the right hander left the 10 pin and the left hander left the 10 pin. You would have thought it had been uh, opposite corner pins, wouldn't you? Great looking shot here, lots of rotation. Right into the one two pocket. It's dealt with by Jason. So they both successfully spare out a righty via lefty. They always say the lefty has the huge advantage. What's that all about? Well, what is that all about? Go but this is a good match. One right-handed, one left-handed. So the lane, the lane can't come into play. But what is really interesting is Martin has moved two arrows to the right. Which I think it's a great move. That's what they got about there in the fresh. Bit more oil for him and uh, getting him back to the right, which I like. Gets, gets so much wild reaction in the back end. Jason will be hoping for more of the same, but just to uh, kick out that 10 in the corner, just like that. And he's up and running, he's breaking down horribly, and they couldn't find a strike between them, could they? It was, uh, it was like wading through treacle for them. Larson, still in the pocket, a double for Martin. Certainly uh, showing the form now that we are... to respond to everything Larson throws at him. So far, he's matched him. Will he match him here with another strike? And there's the answer. Nothing to separate him. Yeah, a great, great gaming prospect. Both players have lined up. And it's good to see uh, Martin Larson really get in that pocket. Can, uh, get a win. Really will give uh, a lot of confidence to uh, spread through the camp. Yes, and it would be a, a three-point uh, lead that the Europeans would have as well. So let's go, Martin. Uh, Three in a row, Turkey, as they call it. Three in a row, Turkey. We have this conversation. Jason has to do as well just to stay in touch. He's looking for 10. And they're the sort of things that change the game. Single pin in the corner when your opponent gets two or three strikes makes a big, Jason big difference. Luck. Sometimes the lefties don't like this pin tucked in the left-hand corner. But uh, Jason was dead on. As much. So he's had to up his ball speed by basically a mile and a half to keep the ball from going through the nose, which is so far so good. Yeah, that little bit of extra tempo is keeping him right on line, isn't it? Just a mile, mile and a half an hour faster, but uh, look at the results. So it was a great looking shot, 390. Rev rate, here it comes, right into the 1-3 pocket. Carries all 10 pins, great looking shot. Four strikes in a row from the man from Sweden. And he's enjoying this, and it really is time. But the ball that wasn't that bad at all, but can't afford any more bad luck. Needs to get in the pocket and take all 10. Just like that, good response from Couch. Both players have almost surpassed their skill. Larson working a four-bagger, looking to try and make it five in a row. Everything's been on the money for him, even that opening one, the left one standing. And uh, this is what Martin Larson is all about. So it was a great-looking shot. It held its line beautifully down the down the lane on the oil. Focused, Larson, and uh, every time he strikes, he really does increase the pressure. It's starting to build on Jason Couch. And Couch. I think felt that pressure there. Got out of uh, out of the pocket. Hit the head pin flush. The head that pin. Was Not the easiest spare. He really needs it just to keep in touch. But he doesn't. No, he's uh, he's lost his line with the uh, spare ball as well. And uh, it's going to be very hard. For with no open frames, and it would almost be over by the seventh and eighth frame. Yes, can Martin Larson really punish Jason Couch? Yes, he can. It's going to be a long, long way back for Jason Couch, and possibly, as Cass says, too far back already. 
55 pins the difference and Larson red hot is that, that six in a row now for the Swede absolutely and it's another great looking shot isn't it Larson's down on one knee and Larson has finally arrived at the Weber Cup and Jason Couch has just got a bowl and hope and uh, see what happens and nothing's going for him absolutely nothing going for big boy at the moment he's caught fire here and, uh, poor old Jason Couch well, no way back from this surely no, absolutely not. And of course, he's standing up here looking for number seven, isn't he? Absolutely locked and loaded. Beautiful line to the 1-3 pocket for the right-hander. There's no reason why this one's not going to go the same. Yeah. Absolutely. Still pacing 290. If he can uh, strike up Paul Moore, who's also made a shaky start by his standards in the next match against Tim Mack. Oh, they really look for business. Jason finally gets a strike, but uh, nobody needs to tell the big man from Florida that uh, that's come a little too late. Yes. Yeah, this is looking good. Another one. Well, uh, if there was any doubt, Martin's just uh, erased it. And this is high-class bowling. Yeah, it's a really good line that Martin's playing here. The guy commented earlier on that he's moved to the right. He's got some fresh oil out there, and the ball's holding beautifully its line. Just gets down to 38, 40 feet, 45 feet, and up it comes. Rotation carries all those pins away. Great well, looking shot. A well, cast guy tempo on his ball, and uh, what a result. Well, that's all it takes. It's, uh, you know, it's just small adjustments like that makes all the difference. Small adjustments like that out of the pocket leaves a three pin, unfortunately, and Chris knows this one's over. He's been up against the guy that's got uh, eight strikes in a row. Exactly. I mean, he had that open frame, but boy. Martin Larson has really punished and dominated this evening. And he is the focus of everyone's attention. Really good to see for Martin Larson as well. Yes, he'll enjoy this. It's um, a big welcome to the European team for Martin Larson. Well, ordinarily, of course, we'd be looking at a potential uh, high score for the tournament here around the 290. Tommy Jones uh, had something to say about that with the perfect game last night, but uh, that is a phenomenal number. What, what pin did Martin leave in the first frame? They were in 10 pin off the That's pocket. right, and there was nothing wrong with the pocket here. European momentum is building up ahead of steam. You wondered if it would stall after the two-hour break. Strike for 290. What a fantastic game. Wow. Wow. Welcome to the Weber Cup, Martin Larson. Absolutely fantastic. And the crowd are on their feet. That was phenomenal bowling, and poor old Jason is just struggling to stay above 200. Blown away here, revenge for last night for the Swede. Poor old Jason is going to be beaten by close to 100 here, isn't he, Jason Couch? Nowhere to hide. Well, this is it in a head-to-head -head match. You, uh, you've each got ten frames, and the guy that gets going first is likely to be the winner. And in this case, eleven strikes in a row. Much too much for Jason Couch. He finishes with 194, but this uh, avalanche of points for Team Europe just continues. Martin Larson contributes now. Uh, it's now a...